All right, in this video, we're going to turn this clip here into this here where she's walking and we have text behind her. Now we've already done a couple of videos like this. Hopefully you've already watched those. Now this time we're going to do it in Fusion, which is more advanced, but also has more features and it's not really that hard to uh, accomplish anyway. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we already have our clip here on the timeline. I'm over top of it, I have it selected. Just head right into Fusion, no need to duplicate clips or anything like that with this, uh, with this method, all right? So the first thing we're gonna do is we need to sort of set up our text. And the reason is uh, we need to sort of know the areas we need to mask out because we may not need to take the time to mask out all of her if our text is just gonna be in a certain area. So let me close that down so we have a little more room. And I have the single viewer on right there. So the first thing we need is some text. Now we can grab a merge node and then a text tool uh, manually if we want, or we can just select our media one in node and just click this text tool, click that, and that will automatically put our merge node in and our text node. You can do it however you prefer. So let's quickly set up a little bit of text here. We'll just uh, do what we did for the beginning. We'll just say behind, we'll pull it up about there. So pull it down and go ahead and stylize it however you uh, prefer. What we did for the beginning is we came down here and did a gradient. And for this uh, black stop, we changed that to sort of this green color. So I can just grab my uh, dropper here, find a green, and then for the top stop, we chose a blue for the sky. Just pick the color here, like that. And then in between here, just click, add another stop, and just change this one to white, and then over here, same thing, another stop, change this one to white. And that's pretty much how we have it uh, set up in the beginning. So of course, go through, go to number two here, which is our outline and same thing here, change that to a gradient and then come down here and just sort of change the mapping angle just so it sort of looks like it's uh, shining a bit and then change a bit of this black here. Uh, I'm gonna change it kind of not quite so dark and the white to be not quite so white. And that's pretty much what we did. And also set a uh, drop shadow on that. Of course, customize it however you want. So now let's go ahead and get to the part where we actually mask her out. So we'll choose our text node here and we can just click our polygon tool. You could use a B spline or even a circle or square if that works for you, but we want this polygon. So I can drag it in, I can click it, whatever you prefer to do and make sure I connect it right there uh, to my text node. All right, so everything sort of disappears. We can go ahead and invert this. You can actually disconnect everything and go ahead and draw out your polygon as well, however you prefer to do things. But what I'm gonna do here is go ahead and select your polygon, come down to my first frame. I'm gonna zoom in here. And what we need to do is go ahead and trace around her. Now it doesn't have to be perfect uh, this first time. We're gonna have like a rough mask around her and then we'll go back and refine it uh, as we need to. Of course, click and hold if you wanna get sort of a curvature in there and then close your mask. Now, once we close our mask, it automatically switches us over to this tool here, which is insert and modify, which is exactly what we want. So once you get your mask drawn, you can go back in and go ahead and modify it and get it perfect. And you can add more nodes just by clicking and getting those in perfect. You can change sort of the uh, curvature of those with your handles and go through here and just get it exactly uh, perfect, okay? So we can go ahead and come over here now and turn invert on. So now we can actually see exactly where we need to mask out. Now this is going to be a very, very complex edit right here. This is going to take literally hours to do uh, manually uh, as you go through every single frame. In this case, we're gonna have to go through every single frame. Uh, you don't always have to go through every single frame, but in this case, uh, because there's such complex movement of her hands and her hair and things like that, this would be an every frame sort of an edit that you really kind of have to do uh, manually in this case. So again, we're just getting everything uh, pretty much perfect uh, in here, making sure we're masking out everything exactly how we need to, getting it as tight to her body as we can but it doesn't have to be 100% perfect because we're also at the end, we're gonna use our soft edge here. So that will blur it in 
a little bit so it doesn't have to be a hundred percent perfect but get it as close as you can of course as you come through here and if there's ever a time when you need to sort of soften just one area just a tip you can use what's called make a double poly you select that then zoom in then you can have an inside and an outside line that you can uh, adjust uh, separately as you can see you have an inside line and an outside line you can adjust that however you want so turn that off you also have a rotoscope assist you can turn that on right here and that helps you to sort of lock to uh, like straight lines as you can see there sort of lock to the angles that it finds as you can see but we don't need uh, to use that in this case so again it's going to come through here i'm going to go through the steps and then i'll just uh speed through it myself because there's no reason to watch it once you know exactly how to do it so again get this pretty close now in this case up here we don't even have any text up there so i don't really need to uh you know focus too much up here unless you have a bunch of animation on your text which is why it would be a good idea to go ahead and set up your text animations first so that way you uh you know you make sure that you're masking out everything that you need to mask out but that's pretty much uh, what we need to do there so it's pretty good right there so now what do we do from there because as soon as i move to the next frame you know it's off right uh now depending on what you're masking off like we mask out a car later on so for that car i don't have to actually change my mask every single frame maybe every 10 or 20 frames uh, in that case but in this case i can't really come up here and then you know change my mask because she moves so much so in this case i'm gonna have to keyframe uh, every single frame. So the first thing we want to do is make sure we turn on the keyframe for our center X and Y. Again, make sure your polygon is selected and just uh, turn this one on right here. Boom, there you go. So I'm gonna use my arrow key, go over one frame. In this case, one frame, it might be two frames, might be 10 frames for you, just depends. But uh, this is how powerful Fusion is and that you can actually do something as complex as this here. So after that's keyframed, go ahead and grab this uh, tool here your center x y and just move your mask over now if all you needed to do was move your mask for say a car or something like that then you're done and you can go ahead and go to the next frame but in this case she moves as you can see her hand is moving her legs are moving all that stuff is moving so then zoom in again and guess what we do this is sort of like rotoscoping here we're gonna have to come in here and figure out what we need to mask off or how we need to mask it off how we need to adjust each of these points of our mask to get it perfect or as perfect as we can get and do this for every single frame. So I'm gonna keep doing this here. We're gonna speed through it uh, a bit. So that's good there. Then just again, hold down on your mouse wheel and just move this around. Now, another thing you can do by the way, which I should mention before we speed things up here. If I need to grab a bunch of these points at once, I can just hold down on the uh, left mouse button and draw a marquee selection over all of those points. And then I can move them all uh, at the same time. Let me just make sure I get a center point here. Move all of them at once. And that can really help you save time when you have a bunch of nodes that you're having to constantly sort of adjust here. So move all those over. This looks pretty good here. That looks pretty good there. Very good. Guess what? We've done two frames. Next frame. <laughs> and this is just how it goes move the mask zoom back in and then go ahead and fix this up and this is how it goes again selecting a bunch of those uh, nodes at once move them all over at once and you can make you know relatively quick work at this here by selecting you know a lot of nodes at once and sort of just adjusting them as such so that's the process and this is just how you go about it so we're going to go ahead and speed up now and get this uh, masked out and then we'll take a look at it. All right, and this is what it looks like after you are all done again it really just depends on what you're doing it could take you know several minutes could take hours but as you can see our mask here 
we animated, in this case, every single frame, as we can tell, uh, as long as you watch some of those previous videos, you know that these uh, lines here on our fusion timeline, that indicates a, uh, a keyframe. And we don't have to push any buttons or anything to keyframe each of our, uh, each of our nodes here for our polygon. We just have to make sure we set that center keyframe first so we can uh, uh, move our uh, position here. So that's the only thing you really have to manually keyframe there. And then just move everything, animate everything as you go along. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. Of course, we could spend more time with things like her hair if we wanted to, but this looks pretty, uh, pretty good and pretty convincing overall. Now, one thing we will, uh, will do, let me hit P there to go into full screen. So of course that line is pretty sharp. Now in this case, we don't need a really sharp line. In this case, I think it would look a little bit better with, a, with some softness. So we'll come back into fusion. Now you can put a blur node on here if you prefer, but uh, let's just use the built in soft edge. We're just gonna pull this up a little bit. We don't wanna go crazy with it because it starts to look like that. Not what we want. We just want a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of blur in there. It makes it look a little bit more natural. And there we go. And that's all there is to it. That's the entire process. It's not really difficult. It can just be sort of a uh, time consuming. And then at the end, add a little bit of that soft edge. And in the end, you get something that looks uh, pretty cool here. Of course, this is a fusion clip, so it has to render a bit. That's why it's going so slow here. But just let this render go into full screen. You can see it looks pretty good with that nice soft edge on there. Pretty cool uh, effect. Of course, we could animate the text if we uh, wanted to as well, or maybe even do like a reveal in it uh, as well, like we did in the uh, previous video. But those are the steps. That's really all you need to know. We're gonna go over it one more time with a different kind of a clip, just to sort of uh, uh, hammer that home. So we do the same thing here, but we don't have to keyframe every single frame, right? With this, because it's a car, and a car doesn't have hair and legs and arms and things like that. So it's much, much, you know, much easier to actually do something like this here. So in this case, uh, we could just show it real quick here. Here's our clip. Of course, the same exact uh, process. We could just come into Fusion. Same exact stuff. You can set up your uh, text first, or you can you know do your mask first, whatever you really prefer. We could just set it up real quick here. Grab our text. Just say Drive. And then, of course, set up whatever kind of animation that you want for that by making your uh, keyframes, which, which I guess we could go over very quickly. I'm hoping you already kind of know about the keyframes because we've already covered them so many different times. But what you could do for those who don't know, just real quick, start it right here. And then I'll come to, depending on what exactly, you know, we want to uh, animate here. We'll just say maybe here or so, and maybe our position as well. So we'll animate our position, I guess. Go ahead and keyframe our center X, Y here on uh, this tab, the layout. Keyframe that, we'll pull it down to the say, we'll just say here. And we can move it over here. We can grab it here, move it however you want to do that. That looks okay. All right, and you can see the keyframe there now on the uh, timeline. Come back to the beginning frame, and then maybe I want to keyframe things like rotation. So I'll keyframe all three of those here on the starting frame, move forward a bit, and then put in uh, maybe some animation here on the, uh, in this case, it's the characters. I can always change this over to words. Make sure those are keyframed actually. And go ahead and have that set out here. Come back to my first keyframe, make sure this is set there. And that keyframes and that animates, and then we'll pull it back here on the X and then change the Z. Rotation a bit there, then come forward a bit more, and then just uh, you know change your animation however you want as you go through each frame, and we'll say it ends about there. So, so then you have your text animation. Very simple, very easy to do. A lot of options here in Fusion uh, for your text animation. Of course, you know colorize things however you uh, prefer. We'll just say red, and maybe some sort of a uh, black outline there. Of course, put a drop shadow on there, make it a gradient, whatever you want. All right, then of course, same stuff. Grab our text layer, and we want a polygon to select that right here, and then do the same thing that we did last time, 
I'm going to start back here on this frame though, just so I have to keyframe uh, one direction and same exact stuff. Just draw around your object, getting a rough outline at first and then go back and change it as needed. There we go. And then head through on your first frame here and go ahead and get everything as perfect as you need to get it. Go ahead and invert the mask because we want the mask to be covering the car and not having the text on the inside, in this case anyway. And of course, as you probably know, go ahead and get this as perfect as you can. We're not gonna spend time to do it, but this is exactly how you would do it. And we don't even need to bother with the other parts of the uh, of the mask there. And then of course, make sure I turn on that uh, center XY keyframe for our polygon. And in this case, I don't really have to keyframe every single frame. So I can go forward now, quite a few frames here, right like that. And then just go ahead and adjust my mask here and then zoom in and go ahead and fix it up here with uh, you know several frames distance from our first uh, frame. And in this case, because the text is already outside of the car, I don't have to worry about the rest of this here that much. There we go. So now we just have two keyframes. We'll head back a bit and just sweeten it up in between uh, our first keyframe here, and our second keyframe there. And once we get this sweetened up, we should be pretty good. In this case, we're doing it with about three different keyframes in this case. So that looks pretty good overall. If I ever need to sweeten things up a little bit more, just head to the keyframe that you are to the frame that you might need to add a little more animation to and just go ahead and, and uh, adjust your nodes, adjust your mask position if you need to. And just go along like that and you can get things done relatively quickly once you know this process and get things looking pretty cool. So that is how you put text behind an object here in DaVinci Resolve by using Fusion.